We have the sand. We have the sea. We even have the sunshine. Welcome to the Sander Said Summer Special. Sanderstead summer special Yay! and uh, today with me I haven't got Jim or Jim is about yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got uh, Kevin the sheep so hello Kevin nah, nah, nah. hello properly hello properly all right how's it going it's going really well and uh, we're going to you're you going to help me with the story today yeah I will I'll help you with the story today as long as I'm not too busy eating grass, because I love grass. Yes, you, you did make a song about that, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I'm famous. Yeah, you're famous, okay. Anyway, yes, so we are going to do that. But before we get started, I have a question. Um, and the question is, how did you do yesterday with the challenge? What challenge? You know what the challenge was. You watched yesterday's video. Did I? Yes, you did. I challenged you to make a drink for somebody. Nice refreshing glass of water or lemonade or something. Did you manage to do it? You didn't or you did? Well, if you didn't manage, don't worry. You can make another one. Uh, you can you can ha have a go today and trying to make one. Um, but uh, there is going to be another challenge later on. So you need to listen out for that at the end of today's video. OK. OK. So we're going to sing our special song which is we are rebuilding God's wall which goes along something like this we are rebuilding God's wall our enemies have made it fall with God's help we know we can Nehemiah says it's God's plan we are rebuilding done everybody excellent 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 well so we're looking at Nehemiah rebuilding God's wall today so exciting to find out whether he does it or with a Sam ballot and his cronies managed to stop them building it what do you reckon do you reckon they will or they won't well we'll soon find out but I've been getting practicing building walls um, here I have my bricks and I've got a bit of a cheat you see uh, I thought if I drilled holes in my bricks and put them on this stick then they would all stay in one place what do you reckon do you think they might well let's have a look I've got three bricks here and uh, I've got a green one nice and green oh got to find the hole there we go this is a magic trick by the way so it might not work I love magic tricks, but sometimes they go wrong. Now in the middle, I think I'm going to stick my yellow one. Let's just see. Yeah, the stick really works. It stops it falling over. Yeah, I reckon if Nehemiah did this, he'd have no more trouble with any of his walls. Okay, and last of all, we're going to place on a blue one. 
Okay, I don't know if you can see that. But I'm going to be extra, extra careful because I don't want any holes appearing in my wall. Okay, so I'm going to cover and protect my wall and cover it up like this. Okay, and it, okay, let's get it nice and straight. There we are. So now that's my wall. So how many blocks was it made of? Three. That's right. Go. And let's just seed it with a little uh, pretend magic word, which is upside down kick. Uh, and, uh, and there we go. Now I have got a totally protected wall with no gaps in it at all. And it's, there it is. One, two, three blocks. You see? One, two. No, that's not right. One, two. Where's the other block gone? One, two. It was three, right? And that magic word made it disappear. Hang on. It's reappeared back in my brick box. There we go. Three. Three, three bricks. Brilliant. Well, it's just as well Nehemiah didn't have me helping him do his uh, rebuilding. Otherwise, he might be missing lots more blocks. Anyway, let's find out about the rest of the story in a moment or two. But before we do that, we're going to go and see what Jim's been up to. He's been interviewing people about their top tips for building a friendship with God. Remember, we're not just rebuilding walls. We're building a friendship with God this week. So let's find out who he's been talking to today. I think it might have been Martin, the vicar. Yeah, Hello, Martin. Are you all right? I'm fine, Jim. Thank you. Nice to meet you. And nice to meet you too. Um, could you tell me how long you've been a friend with Jesus? Well, I became a friend of Jesus, um, would you believe, 53 years ago. So that's a long time. Goodness a... me! You don't look that old. Well, no, thank you very much. <laughs> and, 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 and can you tell me, please, and, and what's your top tip for being friends with God or building a friendship with God? Well, for me, the most important thing has always been uh, spending time with God in the morning with the Bible and being quiet to pray and building up the friendship that way. That's, that's what uh, really makes a difference for me. Cool, that's cool. Thank you, Martin. Thank you. Bye, Jim. Bye. Right. Well, that was brilliant. What do you think? Yeah, I think it's excellent. A really good tip. Yeah, it is a really good tip. Now then, are you ready to get on with the rest of the story? Oh, I'm really ready. Remember, I'm going to do a true or false quiz at the end. So, you have to listen really, really carefully. Right. Can you remember the name of our hero of faith in this story? I can. You can? Yeah, it's Nehemiah. It was Nehemiah. Yay! I knew it. You knew it. Good. So, um, you're not going to interrupt like Jim, are you? Not much. Not much. Good. That's all right then. So, yeah. So, that's the hero of the faith of, of, of our story. It was Nehemiah. Now, when he got to Jerusalem, Nehemiah started handing out jobs to people. The walls were divided into sections by gates, and they were badly broken, the walls. So each section was given to a different group of people to rebuild. Like teams? Like teams, yes. Teams of builders. And the gates that divided up the sections of the wall were actually had some very funny names. Um, there was the Fish Gate. Ooh, fishy! And uh, the Jeshuana Gate. Uh, the Valley Gate. The Fountain Gate. The Horse Gate. And my personal favourite, the Dung Gate. The Dung Gate. That's a great one. <laughs> yes, it is quite funny. Um, anyway, when... Well, you remember Sam Ballot, the enemy from yesterday's story? Yeah, boo, hiss. Yes. Well, when Sam Ballot heard that they were rebuilding the wall, he became angry. <laughs> yes. And um, he made fun of the Jews. We did that yesterday, didn't he? He did. And in the presence of his associates and the army of Samaria, he said, Oh, what are those feeble Jews doing? Ew. 
Will they restore their wall? Will they offer up sacrifices? Will they finish in a day? Can they bring stones back to life from those heaps of rubble burned as they are? Oh, that wasn't very nice. No, it wasn't very nice. Now, Nehemiah, of course, was very upset by Sambalat's words. And he asked that God would punish Sambalat for this because the Jews, God's people, were doing what God had told them to do. Yes, they were. So, so he, he prayed. He did pray. Now, now actually, Sambalat's um, schemes didn't come to anything because he didn't make Nehemiah or any of the people stop. And when he saw that the wall was started to be rebuilt and and the repairs had gone ahead and the gaps were being closed well he was very angry and so he plotted with all his friends to come and fight against Jerusalem and stir up trouble against it what real fighting real fighting but the Jews prayed to God so they prayed and they posted a guard day and night to meet this threat oh I like being a guard Two, three, four. Two, three, four. All right, come back. You're interrupting again. Right. So, yes. And they posted a guard day and night. And did you notice that that seems to be, though, how Nehemiah stays close to God? He prays to him all the time. And simply talking to God and asking him for help and his advice about what they should do. It was the first thing he did. It was. So, Nehemiah stationed some of the people behind the lowest points of the wall because um, the work was getting hard now because they, they had to defend themselves as well as rebuild the wall and uh, Nehemiah posted them by families with swords and spears and bows sounds dangerous it was dangerous and Nehemiah said don't be afraid of them our enemies remember the Lord who is great and awesome and Fight for your families, your sons and your daughters, your wives and your homes. Hooray! You can take our land, but you'll never take our freedom. Yes, I think that was Braveheart, wasn't it? Yes, it was. Actually, it was Braveheart. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so when the enemies heard that the Jews were aware of their plot and that God had frustrated it, they went away. And then all the Jews returned to their work, each to their own. Uh, but could they finish it before they were attacked? Well, we'll find out a little later on. So it's time for a true or, true or false. True or false. So jump to this side if it's true. Jump to this side if it's false. Stay in the middle while I ask the question. Okay. Was one of the broken gates called the spoon gate? True or false? The spoon gate. It was false. It was false. So if you jumped into the false side, you got it right. Excellent. It, there was there wasn't a spoon gate. There was a dung gate. There was a dung gate. Poo wee. <laughs> yes. Now when Sam Ballot heard the wall was being rebuilt, he was very happy. Is that true or false? When Sam Ballot heard the wall was being rebuilt, he was very happy. True or false? True or false? Jump now. It was false, of course. It was false. He was angry. So, the last one. The first things the Jews did when they heard they were going to be attacked was to post a guard. Is that true or false? Is that true or false? That's a bit harder, that one. Was that the first thing they did? True or false? True or false? It was false. It was false. It was one of the first things they did, but the first thing they did was pray to God to help them, which we should all do, really. Yes, we should. Okay. So then, that was brilliant. Thank you so much for listening so well. Now, we're going to go off and do some crafts before we have the rest of the story. So I'll see you all a bit later on. Yay, I like crafts. You like crafts. Good. Jim likes them too. Hey, Jim. Yeah, I do. So, let's all go and do some crafts. In the story, Nehemiah uh, was told by the king he could go and build the walls of Jerusalem. Now, when he went, he didn't have any plans at all, so he could build it the way he wanted. So we thought that you might like to build a room the way you'd like it. 
uh, maybe your bedroom or a living room or some children want to have a tree house and I've made a tree house here. It's not a very good tree house but it's got some secret places so we've got a climbing net and a bed and a lookout and there is their fire and some seats and hiding here somewhere lost it is a climbing pole and then at bedtime you can just close it up like that and nobody will know you're there well that's really great Sandra I loved your tree house um that must be quite difficult building a house I wasn't that quite that adventurous I thought what room would I like to change in my house so I don't know if you can see it this is my sort of sitting room, dining room. So literally all I've got is an old shoe box. Look, I've covered it up here with a bit of material to make it look pretty. And I've covered the backs and the walls to make the wallpaper with um, wrapping paper. That's all it is. And then I've made myself a little table, which again, look, is a bit of card with some straw stuck on the bottom. And I made a pretty vase of flowers, which is just a rolled up bit of card and some flowers in it. These are my benches, cork and a bit of uh, lolly sticks. And then I've got a lovely chest of drawers, courtesy of Amazon packaging, um, when I've literally just made it and put some stickers on to make it like a chest of drawers. This is my shiny mirror, which is a, um, a takeaway box lid. Um, and this is my settee with some lovely fluffy cushions. I had some pom-poms in the cupboard. And then all I've done, a little bit of material here to make a carpet and a, a puffe to sit on. And on the walls, I've made some pictures which were just stickers on a bit of card. And then over in the corner, I don't know if you can see, look, here's my little standard lamp so that we can see when we're sitting down at the table having our dinner and it's all on a beautiful red carpet. So that's my little red room. So have fun making yours. You could do a bedroom, um, a kitchen um, or anything, but that's my front room. Now here, this is, I'm sure lots of you have got Lego in your house here. Look at this house. Beautiful staircase, spiral staircase here. Um, the roof, it's got a, a marine sort of feature window here, windows here. You can make your house design anything you want, but I'm sure you've all got some Lego indoors and you can build your house. Have fun doing it. So we've listened to the story that Chris has been telling us. And it turns out that the Jews had enemies who were really not happy at all about them rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem. And they had to fight and protect themselves. And in those days, they didn't have many weapons, so they had to use bows and arrows. I don't know whether you ever made a bow and arrow, but they're ever so easy to make with just some things that you might find in your garden. So I'm going to show Sue how to make a bow and arrow. So, Sue, what you need is an ordinary cane. I'd like you might keep your beans. Run the beans. Up with, I've got one of those, yeah. yeah. One of the little canes that sometimes you use for your plants. Plants, in mm -hmm. your indoor plants. Mm -hmm. And some string. So take a piece of string. And I'll show you on this one because this is this is a, a, a nice bendy one. So the, if your cane is a bit bendy, that's quite good. So you tie the string nice and tight. Can you see how we've tied it nice and tight to both ends of the of the cane? Yeah. See, I've done that one here, but does it matter that this one here is a bend? No, it doesn't really matter because actually, it work. It'll work just the same. So you will pull it back like that, and then if you let it go, it'll go right to the other end of the garden. And we're going to demonstrate that in a minute. So can you do that with that one? What demonstrate yeah, it? Yeah. Well, just just pull it's it back. Pulling. It's quite tight. I think that isn't one. It? I think that That's... one will go even further because it's quite tight. Safety warning, never fire your bow and arrow at people or pets. They can be extremely dangerous, as you are just about to see now. Don't film that. <laughs> <laughs> so just as the Jews built their wall and they mended the walls of Jerusalem, Sue, so, shall we see if we can build a wall? I think it'd be good fun. Yeah, yeah. So you see what you can find in your house to build the tallest wall you possibly can. You might need to use a table or mats. We yeah. found this. So this is, this is quite cool. You keep it bendy. And then cushions. Everybody's got cushions. 
Be careful how we put them on. We don't want to topple it down. No. That's right. Right, that one in the middle. Okay, yeah, this one right off. Carefully. Right, okay, and right on the very top, this one. Right, now Sue and I, we could, we could use our bows and arrows, we could, yeah. we? So we're going to go down behind the wall. So, yeah, I think we're safe. I don't think the enemies can get us. No, I think we should be all right. Have fun making your wall. Walls are really important things. They keep the roof on your house. They keep the rain and the wind out. They find them everywhere, even here at the beach. This wall here keeps the sand, the sea and the stones away from the beach huts here, wearing away the cliffs and to keep the land safe. So walls are really important for lots of reasons, but certainly in Jerusalem, they were important for keeping the city safe. I believe it's the Sabbath Summer Special! <laughs> right, welcome back to part two. And now we're all going to sing another song. Um, and hopefully you'll enjoy this one. I think it's I Hear You're Calling Me. Three, four. Be there. 
Right, now it's time for part two of today's story. And I thought I'd do something a bit different now. I'd let Nehemiah tell you the last part of today's story himself. Of course, it's just Josh, the puppet, playing his role, but you understand. Here he comes now. So, you ready for the rest of the story? Well, from that day on, half of my men did the work. Well, the other half were equipped with spears, shields, bows and armour. The officers posted themselves behind the people of Judah, who were building the wall. Those who carried materials did their work with one hand and held a weapon in the other. And each of the builders wore his sword at his side as he worked, while the man who sounded the trumpet stayed with me. Then I said to the nobles, the officials and the rest of the people, the work is extensive and spread out, and we are widely separated from each other, all along the wall. Whenever you hear the sound of the trumpet, join us there, and our God will fight for us! So we continued the work, with half of the men holding spears from the first light of dawn till the stars came out. At that time, I also said to the people, have every man with his helper stay inside Jerusalem at night so they can serve me as guards by night and workers by day. <laughs> Neither I nor my brothers nor my men nor the guards with me took off our clothes. Whew, we must have been a bit stinky. Each of us had our weapons with us whenever we went for water. And so that's what happened in today's story. We protected ourselves and we built the wall. So Nehemiah and God's people, the Jews, had lots of opposition, lots of people trying to stand in their way. <coughs> lots more than we've got time to talk about today, actually. I bet you could read about it but for yourself in the book of Nehemiah in the Bible. But they trusted God and they kept on going and didn't give up. But do you know what? I wonder what that's got to do with Jesus. Shall we find out? We've all heard the Bible story And listened to all the different pieces It didn't mention him by name so what's he got to do with Jesus? What's he got? What's he got? What's he got to do with Jesus? What's he got? What's he got? What's he got to do with him? What's he got? What's he got? What's he got to do with Jesus? What's he got? What's he got? In the Bible, in the book of Romans, it tells us something really amazing. It says that in everything we do, we are more than conquerors, we are more than winners through him who loved us. And he who loved us is Jesus. We win every battle with Jesus because he fights for us and has already won against the bad that we have done about the sins, the Bible calls them, that we have done. The things that can stand between us and God and stop us being friends with God. So he's dealt with all of that so that we can be free to be friends with God. Isn't that amazing? That is really good. And I'll read you the rest of that Romans 8 passage. It says, for I'm convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, Neither the present, nor the future, nor any powers, neither height, nor depth, nor anything else in creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, in Jesus, our Lord. That's amazing. So we can all have God's love because of Jesus. So, that's what it's done, that's what it's done, that's what it's done. Yay! 
brilliant. Well done, everybody. So, and now we're going to have another short little prayer time. Let's speak to God. Dear Father God, we thank you so much that because of Jesus, we can never, ever be separated from your love. And help us to understand what it means to persevere, to keep on going, even when things get tough, like things got tough for Nehemiah, when the people around them started being mean to them because they were doing what you called them to do. Help us to persevere, help us to keep on going in your love and the knowledge of your love, Lord Jesus, so that we can keep on to do exactly what it is you've called us to do. And we thank you that you make us strong. In Jesus' name, amen. I like that prayer. Can we sing a song now? Yeah. Well, let's sing a song about praying. That's a good idea. This song is called Let Us Pray. Yay! Okay, so uh, this is a song about praying. Um, Jim, do you think you'd be able to count us in? Yeah, I can count us in. I'm really good at counting. Okay, then go for it. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, never mind. Seven. Let us pray. Jesus. 
challenge given to you on a day by day basis Yay! the daily challenge now then yesterday's was about the drink well today seeing as we were talking about fixing the wall and nehemiah fixing the wall with god's help yeah how about finding something in your house that needs fixing now if it belongs to somebody else ask their permission first but then when you found it, fix it. And it could be just one of your toys needs fixing. It might need something gluing back on or stitching back together. And again, you may need help with that. Yeah, you know it. But see if you can find something in your house between now and tomorrow that you can fix. Yay! I can fix you. I don't think you could fix me. Oh, uh, can I? No, you can't. Oh, all right then. <laughs> You are silly, Jim. Anyway, shall we say goodbye for now? Goodbye for now! And we'll see you tomorrow for our last day together for our Sandersted Summer Special! Yay! It's a Sandersted Summer Special, everybody. <laughs> See you next time. Um, don't forget, you can send your pictures into the office, uh, either pictures that you've drawn or that you've uh, that you've photographed of what you've been doing today with your bows and arrows, and uh, or any, any of the other bits of craft we've been doing. And we look forward to seeing them and sharing them at the Sandstead Light Service on the 30th of August, which will be online and in person as well. Take care then. Bye.